Hello, today is the 13th of March 2019 and it is day 27 of GHV Airfield Sabres. Today is going to be another episode of our look at interesting characters in aviation. And this is quite an unusual character this time because it's a character who is a known writer, quite a well known writer, an aviation engineer and a pilot. So he fits all the elements of STEM, or STEAM as we now call it, to, uh, curriculum in schools. He is both artistic as a writer and he knows his way around a slide rule at the time and uh, mathematics and engineering as an engineer, as an engineer. And he's also a pilot as well, which has a little bit of all of those. And as a, an aircraft engineer, his name is known as Neville Norway, but you are probably more familiar with him under his pen name when he wrote as Neville Shute. He's famous for having 23 novels, some of which have had film adaptations such as A Town Like Alice and On the Beach. He was born in Ealing in 1899. Interesting, had an interesting father. His father Arthur uh, lived in Ireland before they moved to the United Kingdom. Uh, he was head of the post office in Dublin at the time of the 1916 Easter Rising. When in the UK, Neville attempted to join up with the Royal Flying Corps during the First World War, but he was not allowed to because he had a stammer. However, he then went the route of uh, that of an aviation engineer, uh, joining de Havilland initially. Uh, then he got a little bit fed up of working for de Havilland, and I'll actually do a, uh, a little review of uh, uh, de Havilland, uh, of an autobiography of Geoffrey de Havilland a little bit later on in the series. Uh, but he moved in 1924 to the Vickers uh, Aircraft Company, working as a stress engineer on the privately built R100 airship project. Uh, and his boss in that particular project was the famous Barnes Wallace uh, of uh, Danbuster fame. He became chief engineer when Barnes Wallace left the project and Neville's, Neville Shute's autobiography, Slide Rule, covers this period in some detail. In 1931, this is after the cancellation of the R100 project, uh, mainly due to the uh, government built, backed and funded R101, which uh, had a nasty crash, and the whole of the airship project and airship sort of went out of favour at that time, and the privately owned R100, which in theory was better technically than the R101, was also cancelled. Uh, he then moved out of the airship industry entirely, and in 1931 he co-founded uh, what became a very well-known uh, aviation company called Airspeed Limited. Uh, there he helped develop the Airspeed Envoy, which was used on the King's flight, uh, and the Airspeed Oxford, which became a very famous training aircraft with the Royal Air Force being their standard multi-engine trainer throughout World War II. One of his innovations while he was uh, designing his aircraft was the hydraulic retractable undercarriage, which was used on the Airspeed Courier. During World War II, however, he was drafted into the Royal Navy Volunteer Reserve rather than the Air Force. And subsequently, because of his engineering uh, expertise, found himself in uh, a little known uh, department known as the Directorate of Miscellaneous Weapons Development, working on weird and wonderful weapons such as the Rocket Spear and the Panjandrum. Now, you might come across the Panjandrum because it has been uh, detailed in several. Uh, documentaries about uh, the D-Day landings. It was a large Catherine wheel device that was supposed to have been launched off ships, goes trundling up and down the beaches setting off mines. You'll probably know it uh, just as well if you're a fan of Dad's Army because it was featured in one of the episodes of Dad's Army where they were testing it on, on an old airfield and it turned on them and started chasing them all around the place. It's actually well worth watching the clip of the actual Pandran Jandrum in action where it uh, also went out of control, but it seemed to chase a dog or nothing else. So I'll put a link of that at the bottom of these, uh, of this talk. After the war, he uh, had a, a, a Percival Proctor aircraft. He learned to fly, so he was a pilot as well. And he flew it all the way to Australia and back. And he so liked Australia that in 1950, he moved there, took his family there. But he never actually gave up 
British citizenship, never became uh, an Australian citizen. But he did start uh, a hobby of motor car racing uh, in Australia, he had his own car and a uh, Jaguar and took it to many motor racing events and uh, became quite good at that. And that influenced his uh, novel which later became a very famous film called On the Beach. See at the end of that there's a lot of motor car racing in Australia. Uh, he died of a stroke in Melbourne, Australia in 1960. So we have a, a famous author, aircraft engineer and pilot. Well worth researching and getting to know more about. And there is a, a Neville Shoot uh, organisation uh, which I'll put again links down to underneath here so you can have a look at their site and see what they have to say on it. But, and again if you get hold of any, any of his books they're all worth, worthwhile reading uh, but I recommend uh, A Town Like Alice and On the Beach because you can then go and see the films of those and see how it compares with the books which are quite, both quite good. Well worth a read, links are below. Thank you.